A lot's happened in the last 10 years. It's a miracle I'm even sitting here now. I got a second chance. And I'm gonna take advantage of that. But I need you with me, Pete. We're gonna heal the world. Guys, this is my best friend, Harry. Hey, good to meet you. Uh, good job, huh? Still gonna have time for tutoring? We'll figure it out. I didn't know there were bears in these woods. Hey, MJ, I have another name for you. Craven. He's here on some kind of hunt. You know, if you need me, I'm just a call away. Lee, you don't know what you took from me. All Miles talks about is how to be a better Spider-Man. How to help you. What the hell is going on with Pete? He's not himself. Go help him. This was our dream. I'm not going to lose him. We're going to heal. What's up, everybody? Hey, let's get some let's get some more energy up in here. What's up, everybody? What about that trailer, though? Yeah. What's up, everybody? Hey, yo. Yo. Woo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Boom, yo, what's up, baby? Bully. Yeah. <laughs> oh, All right, bully. All right, bully. Gotta sit yeah. down now. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome just, to the Just had to get that Marvel, out of the way. Marvel yeah. Spider Man 2 panel. I know what you're here to see. Excitement. How y'all doing? Hey. What's up? All right, guys. Well, welcome to the Spider Man 2 panel. We are so excited to be here. My name is Dorian Parks. I am the owner and founder of an organization called Geeks of Color. We love promoting diversity and inclusion from the outlets. So. Not enough about me though, like I've been coming here for about past 10 years or so waiting in the Hall H line, so it feels pretty surreal to be right here right now, man. Like, I love Spider-Man, love Miles, so these characters have been so close to my heart, so just can't wait to just talk more about Spider-Man. So that being said, enough about me, let's jump into this amazing panel that we have here. First, we have Senior Creative Director, Brian Inahar. Hey everyone. Senior Art Director, Jacinda Chu. Senior Narrative Director, John Paquette. Yeah. Senior Game Director, Ryan Smith. Yeah. VP and Creative Director of Marvel Games, or Creative Director of Marvel Games, yes, Bill Roseman. Yeah. Yeah. You know him, you love him already, Yuri Lowenthal, AKA yeah. Peter Parker. Can I just, before, before, the camera, before the camera moves on, I just want to uh, say something real quick. Um, I, I know you guys have been hearing about the strike. Uh, we are here this weekend, uh, but we, we stand with, uh, you know, in solidarity with, uh, with our, our, our brothers and sisters and, and everybody in the WGA. Um, in, the, in the WGA and SAG, uh, we are here because, uh, we are able to be here because we're under a different contract for games. But that might not last forever, so. Um, if you want to uh, you know, learn more about the strike and everything's going on, the fight's going on, um, it's, this is not the place. We're here to talk about Spider-Man. But there's a great panel on Saturday morning at 10.30. Uh, all your questions will be answered. And, or you could go to navavoices.org. I just wanted to, to let you know we're, we're happy to be here, but we, we do support everything that's going on. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Next we have Najee Jeter, a.k.a. Spy, uh, Miles Morales. Yeah. What's going 
the lovely and talented Laura Bailey, a.k.a. Mary Jane. And last but not least, the horror icon legend, Tony Todd. A.K.A. Venom. <laughs> let's, get, let's give her one more round of applause to our amazing panelists that we have here today. Let's give her one out. Rock and roll. All right, well, we got a lot to talk in. We got a lot to talk about. So first, Brian, my first question for you is, where do we find Peter, MJ, Harry, and Miles at the beginning of Marvel Spider-Man 2 now that we're in the, the third installment of the franchise? Well, you could find us all in the back being late to the panel because we were watching the story trailer as you guys were all watching it backstage. True, That's first true. off. So, um, yeah, I think it is. What, what's really great about this game is that we're going to pick up roughly nine to ten months after um, the events of Miles Morales, which they haven't played it. It's an amazing video game by the talented team. And what's really great is we kind of have Pete and Miles they're a well-oiled machine. They're a great team. They lean on each other. They really support each other and they're really protecting the city. But at the same time, there's a lot of things going on in their life outside the mask. Uh, Miles is applying to college and trying to figure out how to write his college essay. And you yep. Pete starting his uh, teaching <laughs> career. And then you have MJ, who is still at the Bugle, but um, under a new leadership with the return of J. Jonah Jameson at the Daily Bugle. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> damn, that damn, guy. all right. And, and then, Bill, so my next question is for you. So what, can you talk about the, the dynamic of these characters and how, working with Insomniac, they're keeping the authentic, authenticity of the DNA of these, the core of these characters while still making it their own? Awesome. Thank you for the question. First of all, thank you for coming. Yes! Yeah. So... Our, you know, the heart of our spider group, these characters, they're a lot like the people behind the scenes uh, that, you know, we all uh, are the best when we are together. Um, and when it comes to being authentic, what's so fun is that sometimes you get on this side of the desk, right? But then you realize everyone here, we're all fans too, right? Yeah. So everyone knows and loves these characters. Um, and so it all comes from the heart. Uh, it all comes from, we're looking at the comics, we're looking at everything, we're looking at where our game is, where it has come before and where it's going. So this whole team, it all comes from love, uh, the, and then the characters, of course, are interacting in different ways. Uh, uh, as, as Brian said, they're all at a point where they got to make big decisions. Uh, and when something huge drops into it, uh, those decisions kind of get fractured and cracked, and uh, they have to rely on each other to get through the growing darkness. Absolutely, and just piggybacking on all that, can you talk about, as this is the third game in the, the franchise, can you talk about the collaborative process working with Insomniac and how that's evolved over time? Well, what's so awesome, um, and this is actually before and after the whole pan pandemic is, um, we're about 10 minutes away from each other. And so we would uh, get together all the time um, it, to look at things, just have lunch, talk about stuff, talk about our favorite Spider-Man stuff, um, and so, I think that leads to what you feel in the game, the authenticity. So, so together, working all together, we're all one team. Uh, we all love the characters. We're all, our goal is to make something that you love, that when you play it, you say, this was made by fans for fans. Absolutely. This is a love letter to these characters. This is the game I always wanted. And now my friends, my family can all see why all of us were huge fans of these characters for years and years. Uh, so it all comes from love and, and we come together, like the hashtag says, be greater together. Oh yeah. <laughs> And John, my next question is for you with the, the new villains that we've seen in this, this game, confirmed villains with Craven, Venom, and Lizard. Can you talk narratively why you, you felt those choices for those villains were important? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, boy, what a trailer, huh? Uh, all, those, <laughs> all those villains, like, there's a lot. Um, but for us, it really started with Craven. Uh, he's our catalyst for, for the story, right? Like, he, you know, before the game starts, he's halfway around the world being Craven, uh, hunting, uh, trying to find the ultimate prey. And he watched from afar as the events of the first two games occurred. Um, and he decided, you know what? There's a lot of stuff going on in New York City. That, that might be my new hunting ground. So um, like I said, Craven's a catalyst for, for everything happening. When he comes to, to New York City, you know, a lot of things start, start going wrong. Uh, you know, uh, we, we have Lizard um, coming, coming out. We have uh, the symbiote uh, coming out. 
Um, and, and as you saw briefly in, in, in that trailer, um, Miles is forced to, to come face to face with the Mr. Negative, the, the guy who killed his dad. So there's a lot of drama uh, that, that's happening um, in this game. Absolutely. And just into my next question for you. So I think one of the things fans really appreciate about both of the games is just the environment, just the lived in cities that it feels it feels like a character in its own. So can you talk about how you elevated that with this new game, especially with the PS5 technology and the new locations that we'll see, like with Coney Island and, and Queens and, and stuff like that? Totally. Yeah. It, we're super excited to finally be able to bring Brooklyn and Queens to our fans. Uh, obviously, Miles is from Brooklyn. Um, Peter is from Queens. <laughs> Not only does it increase the gameplay space, so there's a lot more uh, places for you to swing to, uh, but it also has some really cool, um, obviously, Marvel landmarks as well as New York landmarks. Um, for example, I know in Queens, everybody has wanted to visit Aunt May's house and perhaps we're, see where Peter lives. I know a lot of fans had wanted to interact with that space, so just being able to like walk in and, and see where he lives is incredible. Oh, and there's a picture of Aunt May's house. Um, the other thing that's really cool is it's introducing a lot of cool landmarks like the East River. So as you can see in our uh, gameplay uh, trailer that we produced a while back, you can now chase the lizards on the East River, which is awesome. Um, and personally, for me, I just love seeing the Brooklyn B Bridge, the Williamsburg Bridge, and being able to just swing across the water. It's an incredible experience. Lovely. And I got a follow-up question for you, Jacinda. Just uh, sp speaking of the, the our two Spider-Man heroes that we have, can you talk about the suit upgrades, the suit designs, and, and your choices with that? Oh, totally. Um, so the suit designs always reflect what's going on with our Spider heroes. And it's been about nine months since um, the last game. And as the heroes evolve, it's really important to evolve their suits. So when you look at Peter, you know, he's been through a lot, obviously, with his mentor um, turning out to be Doc Ock. Um, but he's also grown really confident in his powers. So what we did was we just made his suit feel a bit more confident. So the biggest thing you'll probably notice is the color. You know, the, the colors are more vibrant. The red is that cherry red. Um, the blue is more saturated. Um, so it really pops off the screen. And I feel like that's that confidence that Peter has as a Spider-Man. Um, and then with Miles, you know, obviously if you played the Miles game, he's just gone off uh, of this adventure um, and challenge that he faced uh, with Tinkerer. And that also reflects how he's also coming to his power and feeling more confident. So we just made his suit more sophisticated and, and clean. So we made a lot of the red details a little bit skinnier. Um, we added the red stripe to his arms, and then we added some of that red detailing to his feet. So it just makes him feel overall more sophisticated and more confident, uh, which is exactly where he is um, when you see him with his new powers. Love to hear it. And, and Ryan, my next question for you, just following up with the new locations, can you talk about how the, the new traversal techniques that we are implementing in this game affected uh, what you pro your approach to this and, and how you elevated it? Sure. I mean, one of the interesting things with Brooklyn and Queens is you're not always surrounded by skyscrapers anymore. And so we thought, what's a really great opportunity? It's something we've seen on, on comic book covers, we've seen it in the movies, we can add the web wings. Um, and that, that was really changed how we look at traversal. Swinging is always our Spider-Man core. That's where we come from. But uh, what we did is design the web wings so that we could integrate them and weave them in with swinging. You gain height and you build speed um, between swinging and the web wings, and you go back and forth and really kind of weave your way through the city. It's really fun. In Brooklyn and Queens, there are some lower spaces, there are some new spaces, um, but you, ha you have to get between Manhattan and uh, the other boroughs by crossing the river. So that's another opportunity where we could really, uh, well, we added these things called jet streams or wind tunnels. You really build speed there, and they just shoot you right along when you're on the web wings. It's really fun, and you know, it's one of the ch chances for us to really push the power of the PS5 there and like hit a level of speed that we hadn't had in the previous game. It's really um, added a new dimension to what we can do with traversal. And just speaking about pushing the power of the PS5, can you talk a little bit more about the, the mechanics, the game mechanics with this, especially with the symbiote and how the, the techniques and combos are, are, are evolving? Yeah, sure. For us, uh, when we looked at it, and what are we going to do with the symbiote in gameplay, it's really about power and transformation. And we saw that, I think, in the gameplay trailer we did a few weeks ago. Um, when Peter does his special symbiote moves, there's a, a, a really big shift to what he does. And sometimes he applies power to just one single enemy, sticks him to the wall or something like that. Sometimes he really changes shape to, to travel across the space and launch people in the air. So I think it's about that power and transformation that we can get from the symbiote, and then we can bring it to life with uh, the PS5. And just speaking about symbiote, Ryan, I'm coming back to you. Can you talk about how the, this, the symbiote evolves and is an important part of the, the narrative and the overall story of, of this game? Yeah, I mean, it's, 
it drives a lot. I mean, we, you know, Bill was talking about how we were, you know, how we worked so close together. I, I remember being in that office when we did, were talking about what our kind of post-game scenes were going to be. We knew right away, well, we're going to have Miles with but getting, getting the spider powers, but we talked about, well, what do we want to do? Yeah. The second one, Spider-Man 2. Cause, and we said, well, what about the symbiote? And we knew we were going to make that decision. It was like, we're going all in. You know, we have to go all in. And so it, it really drives, you know, you saw, as Ryan was explaining about the gameplay, but in terms of Peter's story, how that involves, um, you know, his best friend Harry, um, how it affects those around him, um, and how he changes, um, you know, throughout the game and his relationship. So it, it's just... It really, you know, back um, when we released the first game, uh, I said, you know, people asked, why isn't the black suit? Why isn't the yep. black suit in the yep. game? And I said, yep. if we're gonna do, if we're gonna ever do that suit, it deserves its own game. And that's what you're gonna see um, in Spider-Man 2. Well, we deserve, it deserves its own storyline. Yes, it and does. Yes. Speaking of symbiote, I'm passing it to you, Yuri. How, can you speak to how this, the symbiote has affected Peter? You know, I don't wanna get you in trouble or you spoil anything, but. Right, I mean, the, 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 cool, the cool thing is, is I can say anything I want on this panel and then just blame it on the symbiote later. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know what the big deal is. I, th I think the symbiote makes Peter a better Spider-Man. <laughs> Come on, guys! Don't you think? Don't you think this is? Yeah, I mean, he is—he is definitely, you know, taken with that power, um, and very little responsibility, actually, uh, you know, as it uh, as as it goes. But um, it's it's a, it's a back and forth for him. It's it's a lot of power for him to deal with. And on one hand, it's uh, you know, it's great, and uh, on the other hand, it's uh, it's hard because you know people get hurt. Yeah, and can you speak to how it affects the people in his life, the relationships in his life, like with Miles and MJ? Yeah, well, you know, when something come, becomes more important to you than the people in your life, relationships uh, break, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, they falter. And um, if the, the strength of that thing is so powerful that you can't, you don't, you don't just, you know, yell at somebody and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I was having a bad day, um, then... Uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it takes a lot more to come back. So yeah, we'll, uh, it, it gets complicated for, for Pete and the people around him. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we can't wait to see how it affects him in, throughout the game. So my next question for you, though, my, uh, not Miles, Najee, AKA. Oh, no. hey, brother, Miles. He's Miles. Let's you be honest. He's Miles. Miles. Oh, oh, Miles. Oh, my you, Miles. You are. What's going on? So we, we do see, we do, we see Mr. Negative in this trailer. So can you just briefly talk a little bit about how he's still coping with the effects of his game and, and dealing with the loss of his father? Man, well, y'all seen Miles' trajectory, you know, yeah. and just with everything that he's been through with his family and his friends and just getting into this new world that he's, you know, being introduced to. But he's now owning this, this power. But, you know, um, coming back to Martin Lee, man, that was something big. I didn't think that we would uh, revisit that because we had a lot of emotions on set. Yeah. Yeah, man, I, I was raised by a single mom, so, you know, I don't have my dad in my life, so that was a kind of a... Boom, right there. So we, we kept it right there. But uh, we, we delivered some, some great things for y'all. And you kind of touched on it, but can you elaborate a little bit more on how Miles is really coming into his own, especially after his game? Like, he, he's not, no longer looking at Peter as his apprentice, but more of an equal now with his powers and his abilities. Yes, it's still big bro. This is still big bro, <laughs> all right? Show me the ropes. Pete would not, I mean, Miles would not be anywhere without Pete. So y'all know that. But, um, man, you know, it was, it was great. You know, I still look up to Pete. So, you know, it's still, it's still an ongoing, you know, we learned the physicality, but then you got to learn, you know, just the mannerisms and getting into that manhood of, of carrying on that power with that responsibility. Mm, love to hear it. And, and my last question, because we touched on it as well, but the, his powers and his abilities, how is he really, we, we see them evolving and we, we, we see him, we, he has a couple new abilities. So okay. how is he really coming into his own with that, with his abilities? Oh, we got some stuff coming for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got some stuff coming for y'all. Y'all, y'all get ready. October 20th, <laughs> you're gonna be surprised, you're gonna be shocked, you're gonna be on your feet. Ooh. You're gonna be screaming, yeah. you're gonna be crying, you're gonna be laughing. So y'all get ready, man. We got some powerful stuff coming for y'all. I apologize to employers everywhere because I hear a lot of people going, I've, I've already booked, you know, time off from work, you know, from right. on October right. 20th for like three days. I'm like, right. Man. <laughs> well, we, we, man, we love to hear that. So my, I'm, I'm passing it to you, Miss, Miss L Lovely Laura Bailey. We have Hi. MJ in the house. So can you talk about what are her ambitions in this game and how her, her, her storyline has evolved from when we last saw her? 
Um, well, oh, look at her. Isn't she just lovely? Um, yeah, I think she's coming to her own a, a lot more. I think she's understanding who she is as a reporter and as a writer a lot more. Um, you know, she spent a lot of time away from Peter in Simcaria. Um, and she's, she, am I allowed to say this? <laughs> um, you know, she's writing. Um, and their relationship is more comfortable now. You know, they've been together. She understands what he's doing. And, um, it's interesting to get to see how everything that he's going through uh, affects her perception of that God. I, 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 I see you Talking trying not grounded. to get in trouble. I, I respect it. What? I respect it. And can you elaborate a little bit about, it seems now it's more of a team dynamic with, P, with Peter, with Miles, and with MJ. So can you little, elaborate a little bit more on that and how that dynamic works now? Yeah. I mean, you know, she, she asked for a role to be more present in his work. Uh, previously, and, and now we get to see that she she takes on that role a bit more, and she uh, is very comfortable, obviously, with Miles and everything as well, and um, they work really well together, the three of them. Um. <laughs> and it's hard. Stuff. It's hard. It's hard and to talk about without giving things away, isn't uh -huh. it? Yeah. Yeah. So many surprises. Oh man. I, I think I think it's just you know there's a reason why we wanted Yuri. Laura and Najee all here because they are a team. They are, you know, they complement each other really well, not just what's going on in the superhero world, but what's happening in their lives. And I think that's why, you know, I mean, even when we're shooting our scenes, we're all kind of working together as a team and figuring out how do we put this game together. And I know I, we couldn't be working with better people. Like, I love these people. They're awesome. So I love you too, man. We love you more, bro. They're the, they're the best. Come on, man. Every day that we got to shoot, and it was all three of us, oh, God, it was just so much fun on set, you guys. It was just... Yeah, people talk about chemistry, and there's something magical that happens when these three get together. Um, you know, the, the air changes. Uh, it's, it's really... Any, any behind-the-scenes BTS funny moments? It's God sent, you know? <laughs> it's, uh... Well, I even think about when we cast everybody originally. Go back real quick. I know we're talking about Spider-Man 2, but I remember... You know, when we brought Najee in for, for Miles, we, he, Yuri was already cast, and we did this, we did two scenes when the, the moment at the funeral when Pete goes up to Miles, and then also the part where Miles reveals his power to, to Pete for the first time. Uh, yeah. And we just knew right there. And I remember, I remember Laura coming in for MJ, and we had like three scenes we were gonna do. And I remember they just, they were walking together and they said two lines and I said, that's it. She's, 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 <laughs> they're probably casting her. So I just think that we knew we had such a great group. And then we would always say every day on stage, we would say just like, what do you want to do? What, where do you want to take it? And I think, you know, they made the game better than we ever could imagine it could be. So I thank them for that. So powerful. Love you, Brian. Well, we, we, love, we love the powerful trio, we love Spider-Man, we love Miles Morales as Spider-Man, and we love Mary Jane, but there, there's somebody else that we can't forget about on this panel. Uh -oh. That is uh, the, the Venom of the Venom. Of the Tony Todd, it, it, it's truly an honor to for, have you on this panel right now. Let's, yeah, let's go. Well, um, I'm not really <laughs> Tony Todd. I was sitting here. I'm an AI. No, uh, you know, I'm, I've been a I've been a gamer since um, high school. I mean, I I, I grew, went to college hustling ping ball and uh, ping pong, and I think I go back with gaming systems all the way to television, to Dreamcast, to the early, you know, and I, I collect consoles. So, Dreamcast. You know, I started as an actor. Uh, the voiceover role came to me through DC. Uh, one character led to another, Zoom led to Dark Side, and then some other stuff. And then all of a sudden, I get a call from Insomniac to, to test drive Venom. <laughs> and I got to say, it's been the most exciting voiceover journey that I've had wow. to date. Yeah. Wow. Uh, right. Uh, uh is there a, can you just talk yeah. about the, the casting of this? I know there, is there a story or something along how, the, how this happened? Oh yeah, there, um, so I remember we, <laughs> we cast a lot of the characters pretty quickly. Like obviously we had, you know, Miles, Peter, uh, MJ, um, and then really early we actually, like right before COVID, I think we cast Craven and I knew, I was putting off Venom. I was just putting it off, I was like, I know there's already, you know, there's gonna be so many opinions what people, and I know I was scared to death. And I remember uh, Patrick, our dialogue um, lead, was asking me like, what are you looking for? And I said, uh, I don't know. And then I remember 
I just happened to be on the internet one day and I was uh, listening to one of the, I think it was the Candyman, uh, uh, the new Candyman uh, trailer, and I heard Tony and I was like, hey, if we could get like a Tony Todd, that would be the one. And then a couple weeks go by, I don't think anything about it, and Patrick messages me and goes, you're not gonna believe this. <laughs> Tony Todd's interested. And I remember he sent a real quick tape in, and it was like, sorry, Tony, it was really bad like, audio quality, but it took like three lines, and I was like, that's it. <laughs> please, please hire him. Please, whatever he wants, give it to him. And uh, I, think, I think you all know, based on what you heard, it's, it's, he's incredible. You brought, you brought it to a, a, a mocap session, a PCAP session, yeah. and you're like, Dude, listen to this. <laughs> yeah, we yeah we get on we stage. Were... Everyone's whispering to us. Tony's here. Tony yeah. is here. <laughs> we're, we're freaking so out. Okay. We're freaking you know out. we so you know we we have such a we have a wonderful we you know there's you know there's four of us here from Insomniac, but we have so many Insomniac who are putting so much work into this game. And I again I just want to say if they're somehow listening, somehow thank you for all the work that you guys are putting into it right now. It's yeah. it's incredible the work they're doing to finish this up. Is, it's just, you know, you know I, call, I call Insomniac my second family because we just put so much into this. And you can imagine when you're in your family, everybody has opinions, right? Yep. And I think it's probably the only decision I've ever made being a creative director in 10 years where I just said, Tony Todd is going to be Venom. And everybody said yes. So, um, and uh, it's just, uh, it's been, you know, I mean, going to those VO sessions and just listening to Tony. Even when we did the first, the first, the trailer, when he said, yes, we will, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> You know, and uh, yeah, it's it's been awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, as soon you. as I heard Tony got cast, I was like, "Oh, sign me up!" Like we, that, that's money. And now, ever since then, now we are here, and Tony's here. It's it's incredible. And so, my next question, though, for for you, uh, John, is: Can you just talk a little bit about Venom's motivations and, and his his personality in this, and and what why is he so important to the narrative of this game? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, Venom is a symbiote, right? Um, and I think the, the thing that um, a lot of symbiote stories have in common, and the, and the reason why I think we, we connect with them really well, is that it's, it's a simple human story. We, we all have a darkness inside of us, right? Um, and even you for front row, I know, I know you got a darkness. <laughs> um, even Laura Bailey has darkness. Oh, man. Like, what? If you're um, in traffic, and you're the darkest you one. Use your blinker. Oh my God. Oh well. It's, yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, so we we kind of started with that, and and when you have somebody um, like Yuri or Peter Parker uh, who has such a great heart, um, and then you you put the symbiote on top of that, it really brings out the 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 dark parts of what Spider-Man is about, power and responsibility. You heard Yuri talk about it um, a couple minutes ago. Um, and what happens in the story is that that sense of responsibility starts to go away, right? Like we've, we've built up this, this spider team um, that works well together, but Peter Parker at some point in, in the story starts to think he can do it all himself. He's got this power, right? He doesn't need his team. Uh, there's, there's all this stuff to do in the city, you know, and he starts to, to push people away. Um, and, and that's when, you know, Miles and, and MJ, you heard it in the trailer, you know, there's something wrong with Pete, right? Um, and, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting when you bring the symbiote into, you know, these relationships, uh, how it really challenges them, not just externally, because there's cool powers. You know, Ryan was talking about having that, that control in your hand. Oh, my God, it's amazing. Um, but the, the, the people you love around you, um, yeah, and, and with the, the iconic look, Jacinda, can you just talk about how your approach was to just making it feel like it's its own, but still having that Venom essence, you know, like he's swole, he's, he's got the, the tech with him. So <laughs> Venom swole. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. ready for that? Swole? Venom, mm. he's swole. So can you, can you just talk about your approach with this? <laughs> sure. Um, so as John was saying, the, the symbiote is, is normally an allegory for the darkness within. So when you're thinking about a character like Venom, you have to think about everything that Venom is that Spider-Man isn't. Mm. Um, so where are the differences? So if you look at the Venom design, um, obviously he's black and white. He doesn't have all the color of Spider-Man. Um, he's got his white spider, but it's his very own unique white spider. Uh, he's got the claws. Um, he's got the, the, the big body that's much bigger than Spider-Man. And then he's got a mouthful of teeth. Um, and this is a funny distinction if you think about Spider-Man, because the only way Spider-Man can express himself is through his eyes, his quips, 
um, and his actions, but Venom actually has a, a mouth. So that introduces a whole new thing to this design. And one of the first things I asked Brian when we started on this game was I asked him, does, does Venom actually talk? Because if Venom talks, does he have lips? <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep awake at night thinking about these things. <laughs> <laughs> and then, does he smile? Um, how much is he talking? Um, does he use his mouth for attacks? Um, so we had to really think about things like that. And not only that, but then because he's made out of this symbiote material, what, what exactly is it? Um, and there's a fine line between making Venom into a slime monster or making him into a tentacle monster. Right? <laughs> um, and the mouth had a lot to do with it as well. So in, in some ways, we actually got rid of some of the human anatomy and got rid of the jaw hinge when he opens his mouth because we want to make him look semi-liquid. And you'll see this also when the um, symbiote doesn't have a host um, because we had to make sure that uh, the symbiote wasn't really drippy. So we made a rule that um, he doesn't drip, right? The symbiote doesn't drip because if he was, he'd be slime. Uh, but if you strike the symbiote hard enough um, and you inflict enough damage, then yes, you will see impact. Um, so that's kind of how we thread the needle between um, making him look liquidy um, or um, semi-liquid. Um, and then the last thing that's interesting is, um, you know, Dorian talked about how swole he is. <laughs> that actually was a really fine needle to thread as well, because, you know, we know he's buff, but how buff is too buff, right? Because we need to make sure he's really big, powerful, intimidating, but at the same time, he's also um, very nimble as well, and he's fast. So we did a bunch of sketches where we had a, a wide range of body types where, you know, sometimes he's huge and sometimes he's really skinny. Um, and then what made the most sense in terms of uh, his moveset um, and, oh, there you see, they pulled the cons out. <laughs> yeah, so we were just like going really wide, going really skinny, um, and it's somewhere in the middle is what we picked, and this is what you see in our, our statue in the game as well. So, but definitely a lot of, uh, like, what he does and what he rep represents informs his character design. And you know what's so awesome about working with everyone here? Not only is everyone so thoughtful and puts in the hours and scrutinizing and really thinking, what, who are these characters, what do they represent? Uh, what I also love uh, about the whole team is very, they're very respectful of the core ingredients um, and, and paying attention to where did the characters come from and looking at the source material. But at the same time, everyone um, really has embraced the idea of, but let's take some chances. Let's, uh, let's do what the story dictates. Let's do what uh, the gameplay, what feels right for the gameplay. So uh, uh, what, what will be the awesome wish fulfillment for the players? So it's that idea of completely authentic, but let's take some chances. Let's try some things new. So when you play the game, you're, you're like, wow, I know these characters, but I've never experienced them like this. Um, and then that leads to surprises. You don't know where the story is going. You don't know uh, uh, what's going to happen. Um, and so I just, I just love it. I just love it. The respect, uh, but then the, the bravery to try new things and make the story, the characters, and the game their own. Absolutely. I think you guys have nailed the park on that with these first two games, and I expect greatness from this one as well. You've got to be great together. That's what the, the line yeah. is. So, my, I had to check in on Yuri a couple of times <laughs> on stage, y'all. So he really, really goes into it. So y'all going to be in for a treat. I had to stop like, Yuri, are you, come on, you good? You all right? You okay? Bring it back, Yuri. Bring it back. All right. Yeah, yeah man. And just speaking about the, 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 the approach and the design of it, can, Tony, I'm coming back to you. Can you talk about your approach to bringing the voice of it to life and how you approached it? Well, I had a lot of help in the booth. Uh, shout out to Chris, who mm -hmm. vocally directed us all, but uh, Chris she really made me dig deep. You know, I, on the surface, I could come up with it, but we tried to make, we wanted to make, even though he's a symbiote, I needed to make him human first, if that makes any sense. I mean, mm. he had to be relatable and he had to have an objective and, uh, and follow that through. I mean, I come from the theater, so I have a master's in theater, so every, I take every job, whether it's voiceover, TV, film, uh, as a, as a, as a well-made script. And, uh, and we, just, we just went with the flow. For me, Venom was fun to do, and I wanted to make sure that there was a joyous quality in his, in his destruction, mm. uh, you know, 
He's, he, he's, he's, he's only here on earth for a little bit and he's gonna move <laughs> on somewhere else. So I wanted to make sure that he left an impact of joy and uh, tenacity and deliciousness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it was fun for you because it scared the hell out of us. <laughs> Always fun for me. Yeah, I, it'd be funny when we were uh, in the recording booth because we would record separately when we were doing gameplay dialogue and every once in a while, Tony, you would come and play in our headphones before headphones. a line and it was like, oh God. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Wouldn't expect it and it was terrifying. Uh -huh. And Tony, coming back to you again. Ooh, not, not trying to break the mic. Don't break the mic. Coming back to mic, you, though, though uh, can you just briefly uh, talk about the Laura kind of touched on this, the collaborative process with the other cast members and really finding the, your voice with, uh, within this game? Well, just like Laura said that my voice is in her ear, their voice was in my ear every time I, uh, every time I recorded. And I had a lot of recording sessions. So we did like, uh, I think the sessions were four hours at a time. I won't tell you how many there were, but it was, it was, it was a, I live in another part of LA and I had to drive all the way to Burbank to, <laughs> to uh, lay it down. But it was always, it was never a moment, oh God, I gotta go in. It was like, oh God, I'm so excited to be able to craft this character yeah. and to be a part of the whole Spider-Man family and the Insomniac team and PlayStation. I am overjoyed. Sometimes I talk too much, but I've learned my lesson. <laughs> I was working on another game, and uh, anyway, we're here now, and I can't wait to see the joy and excitement of everybody and this team and this fantastic franchise. Absolutely. And Brian, I'll come back to you real quick. What was that like when you heard Tony voice his lines for the first time officially? And what, what was that? What was your initial reaction? Well, first relief because I was like, okay, we made the right choice for sure. Um, <laughs> and I think then just general excitement. And I think Tony is so talented that you know sometimes depending on you know we have so many different characters or so different so many different actors. You know sometimes we're you know depending on what the role calls for, are we going to you know adjust the the way that they do the line and you just let Tony be Tony and you get magic. And it's just, I mean, I, and he, he did, he mentioned uh, Chris Zimmerman, our voice director, who has been with us since day one on the Spider-Man franchise. And she just does an amazing job amazing. helping. Yeah. Shout out to Chris awesome. Zimmerman, yeah. That's awesome. She does, oh, a great, she does a great job of not just directing our actors, but also like really going, just diving into the material and wanting to know what are, what the motivation for the character, where we are in the game, like really understanding. I think that just, you know, and her working with Tony, as Tony mentioned, has just brought out the best and, you know, to me is going to be, you know, a really signature performance of Venom that you've seen. We cannot wait. Amen. And, yeah, and Tony, coming back to you, what was your, uh, what was your initial reaction when you saw the, vo you saw your, your, your character and you saw your voice coming out of it for the first time, like finished, polished version of it? Well, you know, I grew up an only kid, so I'm a nerd at heart. Uh, I played Monopoly by myself. I did road racing, <laughs> slot cars by myself, and I won. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, uh, it was like a gift come true to be able to, um, uh, to cement myself in the whole voiceover family and world and meet new friends and uh, conquests, and I, I, I'm still pinching myself because I'm a gamer, and I'm telling you, I can't wait for this monumental masterpiece to drop. <laughs> That's right. Sizzle. 90 monumental days? Is it 90 masterpiece, days now? What, 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 are we, what, are we, what are we at? 90 days? I believe so. 90, 90, 90 days. days. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, like, we're shutting it down. It down. October's right around the corner. I've already, already taken off work for the, for the next couple of weeks. Just, oh, yeah. Or just to make sure oh, we're yeah. playing that. Oh, yeah. And so, Kids, Tony, parents, we apologize <laughs> in advance. Tony, we, we have another section coming up, but I, I, I'd be remiss if, if I didn't ask you. Can you do the iconic We Are Venom line for, oh, for everybody? Oh, Bring well, us all out. do you want? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are Venom. Well, I think we got some, some special surprises coming up for you guys. I think the, the next thing we want to talk about is the collector's edition statue that we have here on this table right here. So, Brian, I'm, I'm Pat, can, I, I don't know. I, I already told him I'm taking it home, so you cannot have it. But, but uh, Brian, I'm, I'm You're going to have to fight me for it. <laughs> it's a list. 
coming to you first. Can you just talk about what this, this showcase is and, and, and how it you know, gives a little hint to the game itself? I, I think it really represents what this game is about. You know, it, you know, I said, you know, I've said in previous interviews, I've talked about, you know, it's called Spider-Man 2 for a reason because we have two iconic characters um, in, this, in this great piece of art, but also is it's gonna take two Spider-Men to take on something so powerful, something yep. that they've never been able, did nothing come their way. I mean, you know, if you look at, you know, whether it's Doc Ock in the, in the first game and then Tinker and in, in Miles Morales, like Venom is, a, is literally a whole different beast. Yep. And I think that, you know, it kind of represents what this game is about and just the, just the hopefully the epicness, the, you know, that we're gonna hopefully, you know, we want to deliver and, uh, I look at this, and I'm really, really proud, just like I am about the game that we're making. So yeah, that is, that is really beautiful, guys. Like, I can see, like, I'm like two feet away from it. it, it I'm, again, I'm taking this home after this. They're going, security's going to try to stop me, but it's all good. <laughs> but Jacinda, I'm coming to you, though. Can you just talk about the, the design of this and, and your approach to that? Right, and we've talked about this again and again, but um, a lot of this game is really about uh, the characters fighting darkness, right? Darkness perhaps within, darkness without. So it was really important when we were doing the statue that you may not know what the outcome of this fight's gonna be. So it was really important that Venom looks powerful um, and both of the Spider-Men look powerful and they're engaging each other and you don't know who's gonna win. And I think that's a really part, a big part of the, the, the success of the statue. Um, that and the fact that it's Jimungus. <laughs> when, I, when I got the sample sent to me, the box was so big, I was shocked to unbox it. So I can't wait to, <laughs> to get this in the hands of fans as well. So. And this is available for pre-order on PS Direct. And if you are not in the US, you can check your local re uh, retailers and local stores. Uh, with that <laughs> being said, I, I'm, I'm, Brian, why are you putting on gloves right now? Like, that's, <laughs> Of what, these? Yeah, what, 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 what is that for? Well, like, I'm, I'm, Dorian, before we, I think we should play the video first. I, I think we should play yeah. the video. Let's, let's go ahead and play that video real quick. Uh oh. What? Uh oh. Miles! I need your help! What is this stuff? Wait, Pete! I got an idea! Nice! One more time! On three! One! Two, three! I didn't know they didn't show me that before we came out not here today. Oh, they no, did was, not. Oh. They, yeah. Wow. Now I have to get some of your secrets, you guys. They knew what they were doing. Wow. All right. Well, here we go. Like, I, like Marvel, so they they keep everything so tight lipped. I found out about this five oh. minutes before we came out here. That's how serious they are. That's so, Brian, can you can you speak to this epic, amazing, beautifulness Not right here? Wow. This has been one of the biggest secrets throughout the entire development of the game that we were going to have a the console and the DualShock. Um, so I, it's I know we're pretty pumped. I mean, I think you know we talk about the symbiote playing a big role. Obviously, it plays a big role here in the design of the console, and we think. <laughs> Yeah. Thank PlayStation for uh, going above and beyond with the design of it. I know I just worked really closely with everybody on, on the design of it, and I, I'm pretty pumped, man. I, 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 I'm just, I'm starstruck right now. I mean, that's why I have to wear the gloves. I can't, you know, you can't touch right. them. Right. You know, and Jacinda, can you just elaborate on the design elements of this and this, this how beautiful it is? Like, what, what's up with that now? <laughs> what is up with this? <laughs> just, just like the statue, um, the theme of the console is basically the, the symbiote takeover. Um, so again, we left a bit of red on the console and on the controller because the question is, who's going to win? Will the darkness win or will the light win? Um, and again, it's up in the air. And this Why is there so much symbiote on there, Jacinda? <laughs> Why is there so much symbiote on there? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Play the game and find out. <laughs> 
And, and Ryan, can you, I think we have a little bit more details on the, the not just the, the this PS5, but is there a little, couple more details you want to talk about with uh, where people can buy this or how they can get Yeah, so you can actually start pre-ordering uh, next Friday. So the 28th, Ooh. you can start pre-ordering. Yeah. So um, I know I'll be pre-ordering. I'm, I'm already... Or I'm just going to take this one with me. I, <laughs> and also, uh, so... Last thing, if you if you guys do want to pre-order now, make sure to get that. Go to PlayStation.blog. You can pick it up then. Pre-order it on when it does debut. Um, I know I am. And so that pretty much wraps up most of what we want to talk about. But we do have some uh, one more thing we want to just reveal. We got some Mondo posters. We want to talk all things Mondo. But before we do that, I just want to say thank you again to the incredible panelists that we have out here. Yes, yes. Thank you all for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we got we got beautiful a we got mondo. beautiful we got that beautiful mondo, mondo poster. Yeah. So if you do want to pick that up, uh, if, if you want to throw that back on the screen real quick, you want to throw it up on there. If you if you do want to pick that up, you can go to the Marvel booth for an opportunity to pick it up. There there's they're there now, and then you can also have a chance to have all the incredible panelists up here sign it. So if you want to head over, to, yeah, it's, it's some serious. So <laughs> you want to if you want to go get that, make sure right after this panel, head over to the Marvel booth. It's happening. You, able to pick it up but well, with that being said we hey how about for dorian doing a great job with this yes, panel? Yeah, how about that i hear somebody say my name don't want to hype me up hey hey dorian park and how about guys. and how about for our this, have, this is this has have, been a surreal moment but you no know, you're oh, I was just, how about for our asl interpreter over here yes. who was working hey. overtime there was a couple of them <laughs> love, love that, love that over there. It's it's so incredible. But I'm just honored. Yeah, I've, I've said at the beginning, like your boy has been a, a Spidey fan all his life. I've grown up with this franchise, grown up with these comic books, grown up with these characters, and to be out here talking to so many great fans that love the game just as much as me, it's a surreal moment. So it's not. I don't want to. You know, I'm, I'm up here getting emotional, like Uncle Ben just died or something. But like, it's, it's, <laughs> uh, it's a real cool moment. But with that being said, you know, let's. Let's also let's let's get back to the Mondo poster. So you can pick those up. You know, <laughs> I, I'm you know I'm trying trying to keep it on schedule, trying to keep it keep it everything keep it, everything flowing. But you can you know it's, a, it's another Mondo collaboration. We also do have is the the vinyl soundtrack of the game with the amazing score from composer John Pacina Pacino. I'm gonna mess up his name, but you know uh, you can also get that vinyl as well. So it's pretty cool. But Marvel's Spider-Man 2 arrives early on October 20th. So make sure to pick that up if you. If you haven't already pre-ordered, make sure to get pre-order. Make sure to go support this game. But yes. all, all in all, with that being said, I want to say thank you again to this incredible panel. Thank you guys so thank much for all your hard work. And also, and also, before we go, follow us on all social media so y'all see <laughs> any new platforms and any new things coming up. Because we'll be traveling around until October, all right? So follow our Instagrams. Mine is N-A-J-J-I-T-O. Gotta, gotta get that plug. And, I and our it. names. Yeah. yeah. Yuri. Why you gotta be so weird with your... I, 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 I don't know. I, my family calls me that. It's a family name. I don't know. It's, they got ragging my family, man. God. No. See, it's the symbiote. I love weird the people. The symbiote is coming out. <laughs> I told you. This I told you. He do, doesn't leave. I can do anything I want now. Y'all better get ready, man, because it's going to be crazy October 20th. Bro, I got guys, right? guys, I can't even imagine. We're greater yeah, we're together. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Buddy. Ryan, we have a little bit more time. Can you talk about the, the chaos you have to deal with between Yuri and Naji throughout this whole process real quick? <laughs> I mean, it's hard to get mad at them. It really, yeah. is. It really is. I mean, I think because, I mean, not to get, they just... We trust them implicitly with this character. It's just like, you know, you know, hopefully Bill has talked about, you know, letting, letting us work on this franchise that I think we can say we've all been fans since we were little kids. And, you know, we talk about, you know, it's cliche to say, but in ways we feel a lot of responsibility to, to make this in every day, whether we're, you know, it's, you know, we're working, talking to each other over Slack or we're on the performance capture stage or just even texting each other on a random Saturday afternoon. Yep. yep. Like, we have the best jobs in the world. Like we, yeah, man. Is, we get to be big kids on set. To be yeah. honest, we get yeah, to be I always, our, If someone's asked me, he's like, "What's your job?" I'm like, "I'm just a big kid." Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, it's the best. Can I? Uh, as Brian said, and as everyone has has used the phrase, it does all come down to power and responsibility. Our our power, if you will, is we, man, 
we get to work with all these great people, so talented. We get to work on, we get to make a video game. Like, just that is awesome. And we get to now make the Spider-Man game in games of our dreams. So the power is, wow, so we, we have these great characters, these amazing creators to work with. Uh, and our responsibility, all of us, is make something awesome. That's right. Yep. That's right. Y'all get ready. Well, I think that we, we, we pretty much wrapped up everything. We, we hit everything on the head. Like, anybody else got any last minute things they want to throw out here before, before we wrap up this panel? Any, anything else? I just want to say thank you for all the amazing support. Every tweet, every note we get, we read them all. Um, and we really appreciate it. And uh, we're working really hard for the next couple months to finish this and deliver the game that you all are hoping for. So just yes. thank you again. Yep. Yes, thank you all, man. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta give, a, gotta give a shout out to the Insomniac community team because the way I, I, I see, because I'm one of them, I see the fans out there. I see how y'all y'all hit them up for new news or anything. Like y'all y'all been y'all been y'all been bullying them a little bit, but but respectfully <laughs> respectfully bullying because I, I I see the passion as well. So gotta shout out to the the Insomniac community team because that's a that's a tough job. But anybody else got anything to say before we wrap this up? Yuri, you look like you got something to say. Uh, there's only one room for one bully on this stage. Oh. <laughs> No, 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 I already did it. All right, that's like, I got it out of the way. Listen, listen, I, 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 I've been wanting to say, you know, we got Bully Lowenthal, like, I, I wanted to say that this whole time, so I, I, I had to shoot or shoot, so there we go. Bully, nice yeah. to meet you, man. But yeah, all in all, that's it for this, uh, that's it for this Comic-Con San Diego panel for Marvel Spider-Man 2. Without y'all, man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you guys again for coming. Like, this, is, this, is a, this is a monumental day, this is gonna be, Biggest game of the year, biggest game of the century. I'm, I'm, I'm hyped for it. So thank you guys again. We have a, we have one more little trailer for you guys to, as we, as we. Oh, that's right. Don't oh, leave, it's, don't it's leave You know how Marvel does. Come on now. Yeah, come on now. So, so get ready. Let's Just stay to the end of the credits. Yeah, come on. My bad. Should have, should have teed that up for you guys before I say goodbye. But here we go. Hey MJ, I have another name for you. Craven. He's here on some kind of hunt. I don't know if you need me, I'm just a call away. What the hell's going on with Pete? He's not himself. This was our dream. We're not going to kill the world. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming out. Make sure to head over to the Marvel booth to get a, a signed Mondo poster. And, you know, there. be great together, baby. Love y'all. Thank y'all so much, man. PlayStation.